Using a simple kinetic theory, kinetic model of matter, describe the structure of a solid. A solid, firstly, is, you know, closely packed. They can only vibrate in space. Do a little jiggle there. They cannot fly anywhere. And they have a, kind of, a, kind of a layering structure that is kind of fixed depending on how the atoms are packed okay there's many layering structure but that's the idea of a solid so you can describe any of the two from these you want to say that the the atoms or particles or molecules are very close together very close together or you can say they're almost like touching second you can also mention they have a regular or repeating pattern. Pattern. Uh, it's not in the physics vocabulary, but if you mention lattice structure, I'm like, okay, I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, can la, can la. But physics, we don't know what is lattice, right? If you take chemistry, then you're like, oh, lattice, lattice. Physics, we don't know. But never mind. It's okay if you write that. Uh, you can also mention... Ah, the vibrating in the spot. You don't your your atoms. They don't they don't fly around. They just stay at spot and just vibrate. So you can kind of say that they vibrate about their fixed point or fixed position. So I'm looking for these three ideas uh, when you're writing your answer, and you got any two, then I give you a. Two marks already. Okay. Part two. Part B. The specific latent heat of vaporization is greater than the specific latent heat of fusion for the same substance. Explain this in terms of spacing of molecules. Okay. This one, a lot of people mention the spacing of gas versus spacing of liquid. But hang on a second. What are we comparing here? We are comparing the process of vaporization to fusion. Okay, vaporization is the transition between between liquid and gas. Not just one way, but both ways. Fusion, you're looking at the transition between solid and liquid. Not just one way, both ways. So don't just talk about oh liquid is further space compared to gas. Huh? Then how about solid and liquid? Leh? You want to mention solid, liquid and gas, all three together. So what the idea is, okay, solid, liquid, gas. The one they want to say is, when you go from, let's say, solid to liquid, the increase in separation happens. They get further apart, correct? Bonds, uh, they move or slide around each other, things like that. So let's say increase in separation of the atoms but when you go from liquid to gas also increase separation again but a much larger increase so i'm gonna say larger increase in separation and that is what they're looking for larger increase separation they're not looking for a Solid liquid gas. They're not looking for you talking about, oh, gas got larger separation than liquid. Yes, correct, but don't look at the process, the transition between the states, not the state itself. So how we can write this out is that uh, there is, let's, let's see, which one we'll use? Vaporization. Okay, let's use vaporization. So for vaporization, no, no, no. The vaporization process has a much greater increase in the spacing of molecules compared to the first part which is fusion which is solid to liquid the very important word here is a much 
greater increase in separation. Not greater separation, greater increase in separation. Because if you just talk about separation, then this one is far separation, small separation. This one is what? Medium separation? Small, medium, far itself doesn't really tell us anything. We're going to talk about the increase in separation. Increase in separation. Okay, that's a B1 mark here for talking about the increase. So then we come to part two where we uh, look at an experiment for this. A heater supplies energy at a constant rate of 0 0.045 kg. Okay, these are mass. Huh? Remember this. Variation is shown and the substance is perfectly insulated from its surroundings. Perfectly insulated here means assume no heat lost. So you do not have to account for energy gain or loss to the environment because they say we don't need. This is how you extract the question. So this beautiful graph, zigzag, zigzag, going up. And we need to determine the temperature which the substance melts. Okay, we are going to assume that your substance has only solid liquid gas. Huh? So, hmm, how do we know where does melting occur? Okay, here's a tip. When the object is changing phase, change of phase here, means there will be no temperature change when that is happening. For example, you know, when your water boiling, boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It will only boil at 100 degrees Celsius in normal conditions. Melting for water, 0 Celsius. So when you see like the flat part, like this one here, flat, ah, that is where you have a change in phase. So there's only two options. It's either down here or down up here. That's where you have a change in phase or change in state of matter. So down there, I think it's going to be solid to liquid. La. So uh, this one is solid. Wait, let me write here. Solid to liquid. Then the second one here will be liquid to gas. There's only two transitions between the three states. Okay. So we want to look for where it melts. Then you got to look at your down here. Negative 100. So we just write there. Negative 100, it melts. It's definitely not water. Water doesn't melt at negative 100. Some other chemical or substance. Okay. So the power of the heater is 150 watts. Use data from the graph to calculate in kilojoules the specific latent heat of vaporization of the substance. Vaporization means we are now looking at the transition from liquid to gas. Okay, let's zoom in here. So when you have power of heater, mm, we need to do our MC data already. So here's the idea. Whatever heat is supplied goes to the to, to, to go to the substance, uh, energy of the substance. In this case, what supply is the air, electrical power? Okay, so we can think of it as a uh, P times time. Wait, 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 where does this come from? Remember, power equals to energy over time, or in our case, Q over T. So if you want to Q, you just take P, multiply by time, or time interval. As for the substance, when you want to look at the increase in temperature, do we have an increase in temperature? Oh, vaporization. Okay. If they say vaporization, then you have to use the M times L. L is the specific latent heat of the substance. So ML. Do we need to include heat loss? Ah? Sometimes when you add a Q loss or something like that, don't need because they said earlier, this experiment is perfectly insulated. No heat loss, so don't need. So just this. Okay, let's find this. So power, 150 watts, heater. Time interval. Hmm, how long does it take? What's the mass? So now we saw the mass. 
0.045 kg of a substance. Okay, so it's right here. 0.045 kg uh, times L. How long does it take this much to completely melt? Uh, sorry, completely bubble and become gas? Let's look at the graph. So the transition between liquid and gas is the one higher up here. We have to see what is the time. So this first point where it starts to become gas is 3 minutes. And it ends somewhere, this is like halfway. Paper 4 you can read halfway. Huh? Read between boxes. Yes, you can do that for paper five. A uh, paper four, sorry, paper four. So this is going to be halfway. So that's eight point two four eight point five. Yeah, we'll go with eight point five. So it takes this long to completely melt our mass of zero point zero four five kg of this thing. Once it's all, not melt, sorry, completely vaporized. Then once it's all gas, ah, then you'll continue to increase temperature. So let's use these two times, 8.5 down here and then 3. This is our time interval. Okay, let's go. So we take 8.5 minus 3.0. 5.5. Five minutes. So our L here should be one one zero zero okay, one one zero zero times ten to the three be careful ah uh, here already got kilo joules in the answer line so you just don't need to put the times ten to the three just write one one zero zero okay three marks the first mark comes from the time that you read from the graph five point five minutes this is c one Fortunately, this mark is a bit strict, so you gotta read 5.5. .5. If a little bit more, a little bit less, then then wrong already. Next, I'm looking for you knowing how to equate energy supplied to this thing versus the energy used to, to change the state. So this is C1 for your equating of these two energies. Don't know, lah, this is from gas, right? So you can imagine it's like some, some liquid here. Perfectly insulated somehow. Magic. I don't know. I just in a vacuum maybe. And then you put some heat. Bunsen burner or something like that. Oh wait, this is a heater, sorry. My bad. Heater. Heater means you put heater inside there, connect to a wire. Connect to power supply. Okay? And that's where the heat will come out. And then you start to bubble and become gas. Bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. Okay, last part. Suggest what can be deduced from the fact that section Q of the graph is less steep than section P. Less steep. Ah. Q is less steep. Oh. So you look at the gradient of Q. Okay, let's highlight those. These are the states where... Oh, these are the sections where there is an increase in temperature. Up there. And down here. Okay, so just now when we look at the place where there's a change from liquid to gas, we use Q equals to ML, right? There's no temperature data. But when you want to look at the change in state, that's when you use Q equals to MC delta T or MC delta theta, whichever one you use, temperature. So if we compare this, you're using the same heater power, 150 watts this one very fast increase temperature so this in th this what this means is you can uh with you can increase temperature with lesser heat supply here but if you look at this part your temperature doesn't increase as quickly. The rate of increased temperature is much slower. But you have the same power heater energy coming in. So your increase in temperature needs 
more. Q. Say you want to increase in temperature of 1 Celsius, it needs more energy. Increase in temperature of 1 Celsius, you don't need so much energy. So that's the idea of heat capacity. You need a lot of heat absorb, only your temperature will increase. So we say that the gas, up here is a gas state ready. Yeah? This is gas, liquid, this gas, liquid, solid down here. Your gas, or rather Q, has a higher specific heat capacity. So let's go write that down there. So what does less tip tell us? A lot of us mention, oh, the time is shorter, things like that. But what they really want you to mention is the specific heat capacity. So we say the specific heat capacity at Q, which is a gas, is larger than P, which is when this one is a gas. Eh, sorry, liquid. So we talk about specific capacity larger. That's one mark. Larger or higher? Okay. All right. I think that's the end of this question. So that's all for this video. See you in the next one.